So one thing that we are asked to do is to be able to compare these two molecules, which are methane and water. Why compare these two? It's because they're both kind of small and they have a similar molecular mass. And by comparing them, we can actually appreciate water a little bit more. That's the goal of this, is to be able to help us understand why this molecule right here, H2O, is so cool and so important for life. So they're both really small molecules. The formula here is CH4 for methane or methane. And over here, formula for water is H2O, as you know already. And just by comparing uh, these four properties, melting point, specific heat capacity, latent heat of vaporization, and boiling point, you can already see some uh, extreme differences between these two. So the melting point for water is zero degrees, whereas for methane, it's negative 182. I don't think you're expected to be able to recall all these values. Uh, more, it's to understand the big picture significance of the difference between these two seemingly similar molecules, but in fact, their properties end up being very, very different. I mean, this is not so significant. 2.2 joules per gram per degree Celsius versus 4.2 joules per gram per degree Celsius, uh, specific heat capacity. But in terms of the melting point and in terms of the latent heat of vaporization and also for the boiling point, you can see that water is just a little bit stronger at holding itself together in terms of uh, I mean, so holding itself with other water molecules together. So H2O is going to be linked to H2O uh, by a, a special bond that exists, which is called the hydrogen bond. And this hydrogen bond does not exist in a molecule of methane. If you actually draw out a molecule of methane or you build a model, it actually ends up looking like a very uh, symmetrical diagram here and any way you kind of flip it over it's always going to look the same so everything's very balanced out in this particular molecule and so there's no polarity it's considered a non-polar molecule and if it's non-polar it ends up being relatively hydrophobic or it doesn't enjoy interacting with water whereas water is a polar molecule it actually looks something like this and those of you who understand chemistry know that there are some lone electrons up here which are pushing the bonds away that's why it's not a straight H2O molecule like this and as a result that is why this side becomes partially negative and the H's become partially positive so as a result of this polarity you end up with hydrogen bonds that exist uh, between water molecules and that greatly changes a lot of these properties that you can find in water versus methane so in each of these explanations over here, you can see that hydrogen bonds are continually being mentioned. And it's hydrogen bonds that are in general restric restricting the movement, restricting the movement of the actual water molecules. So to get them from you know solid to liquid, the hydrogen bonds are holding those water molecules in place a little bit tighter than they are, well, significantly tighter than they are for methane molecules. And that's why it takes that much more energy to actually bring water from a solid to a liquid state. Same is true for the boiling point as well too. You need to break those hydrogen bonds to allow the water molecules to break free and turn into a gaseous state or a gaseous state. I'm not really sure how to say that word. I was brought up in multiple countries that spoke English in many, many different ways. And then also over here, you have the amount of energy that can be stored per gram per degree Celsius change. And it just takes more energy to actually raise the temperature of water, basically because hydrogen bonds, again, are helping to restrict the movement. So the moral of the story here is that hydrogen bonds kick butt and they allow water to do awesome things. So go drink a glass of water and say thank you to the polarity of the water molecule.